Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines here. $9.85 million worth of campaign funds from FTX are coming back, baby. BTC may have a new bottom, says one analyst. We got Flair Networks in the news. We got Bob Way, used to be at Ripple. He's back in the news on the scene. Shout out to him. ISO XRP ledger proof, is it? Oh, we're going to take a look at it. And can you say it with me? Say it with me. MoneyGram, Ripple Partner, Brazil equals XRP and an XRP chart you have got to see. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow us on TikTok, YouTube, and Twitter for exclusive content. Right now, $846 billion market cap for cryptocurrency. We're up 1.6%. Good morning, everybody. Bitcoin now, 16800 plus. But wait till you hear one, one technical analyst says about where that's going. Ethereum, 1200 slightly over. Tether market cap is $62.2 billion, they say. XRP is $0.35. Cents. It's off by 9.6%. Good morning, everybody. Right now... I want to show you guys, if you haven't done it, 18 seats left in this group before I shut the door on this deal. One year membership, exclusive VIP ticket to our live event, for which I have just locked in a very, very key important figure in this community at that event. Stay tuned for details. Private groups and lessons, weekly live stream that we do. I tell you, I know your life's busy. You don't have to watch every single video. I'm going to give you the overview. And if you can see here from the subjects on the side, by the way, all the different topics and areas of interest that we have here, this community is super, uber smart, super supportive. And we're going to make sure that you get the understanding and the knowledge you need. You know what the next Phoenix rising from the ashes is? It's us. It's us. Join that group. You'll find out why. Let's get into it right here. Take a look at it. Greenwood Holding Company, shout out to them. In case anyone has forgotten, JP Morgan was involved from the beginning and even before Ethereum was launched. Take a listen. Shout out to DAI for this. I, I can attest that JP Morgan was there uh, right from the start uh, before uh, public mainnet was, was even launched. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. ETH gates real. Facts aren't in dispute. I need to remind people because it is a very big deal. Remember, Ripple is holding the email drafts and have agreed to keep it confidential for now. Shout out to Michael Branch for this one. Give him a follow. $9.85 million will be sent back by the Senate Majority Pack, the House Majority Pack, the Democratic National Committee, the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee, and the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. Let me just break this down chapter and verse what this means, because I think David Schwartz said it best the other day, and I'm going to paraphrase. Politicians are going to be pissed they got to give this money back let alone how it makes them look that they accepted it now from someone who was, as according to John Ray, who is now the new CEO of FTX, said there is criminal activity happened there. No question, it is not even up for debate. Well, now you've got a pissed off politician that had to get money back. Boy, they are looking to make an example out of you. That is not good. That is not, that is not good. Mm -mm. This ain't good either. But we will get, we're going to get to some good. But we got to pay attention to the whole market, everything that's happening. This is Gareth Soloway, I believe is his name. Uh, he's sharing here that he believes that we will see an upside, some clarity, some legislation in the middle of next year. But he also says we're going to see sub $10,000 Bitcoin. Take a listen. This is their first time ever investing, right? So they just were going to be oblivious and kind of get caught up in the hype. But going into 2023, I still think there's more downside. Uh, doesn't mean we can't have a small bounce, but I still think that we probably don't bottom out until May or June of 2023. I've really been likening the, the FTX blow up to what, what Lehman Brothers did to the stock market. And I noticed that when that happened, it took about six months for the stock market to bottom. And it took another 45% dip in the stock market, in the S&P 500. So I kind of mapped that out. And it gives me a general roadmap. And like, like we've both said here, 
that's subject subject to change, you know. But that right now is giving me a general target of around nine thousand, and a, a bottom maybe in May or June of twenty twenty three. And I do think this. I do think that we will get regulation probably in the in the first half of twenty twenty three. It's going to be the best thing that ever happened to crypto over the long term because transparency will mean that big money will finally start to take a serious look at cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, and that's the only way Bitcoin's going to see a hundred k or beyond is if you get big Sorry, money investing. Garrett, did you say a bottom in May of twenty twenty three? Did I hear that correctly? Correct. Yeah, that's that's what I'm looking at right now is a bottom right around that twenty the May May June of twenty twenty three. There you have that. That's uh, 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 Gareth's thoughts there. Shout out to him and shout out to Daniela Camboni from uh, Stansbury Research. Look, uh, here's what I want to say. Two things to this. One is, you know, we see a U.S. exchange sued and then something to go on with Tether to be rectified with the not showing the reserves of the product, the only product that the Federal Reserve sells, <laughs> by the way. Um, then I think you could see this sub uh, 10,000 Bitcoin take place. I really do. Now, as far as legislation goes, I would I would temper the legislation thing for myself. I, you know, who knows who's right here? I appreciate his insights. But what I'll say is, is if we get legislation, I think it's stablecoin legislation. I think full on legislation for this whole space is still quite a ways away. I really do. And John Deaton has said that himself. And I, I have to agree with him on that. I think we're still a couple of years out on that. So we'll keep an eye on it. But I certainly appreciate Garris' insight on where he sees the numbers for Bitcoin going. Remember, Bitcoin's dominant over the whole space. So if Bitcoin's 9,000, what's XRP? What's this? What's that? What's this? What's that? That's why I've done some consolidation. And that's one of the major topics we're talking about inside of our group. Make sure you check it out. There will be a live stream tonight too, by the way. Don't miss it. This right here, shout out to Tony from Thinking Crypto and shout out to Hugo Villion here, who I saw in Austin last summer and wished him well and cautiously optimistic about the project here. But listen to what he says here is the goal he'd like to see uh, we, for F uh, Flare. We, uh, we want Flare ultimately to be the easiest layer in the world to be able to acquire information. Mm. Like that that would be, like if, if I think about a goal uh, in my head for what I want Flare to be, that would be it. Because I think once you can get information from as many systems as possible, and you can do that safely and with decentralization, then we have a chance to build a very much larger blockchain ecosystem. Well said right there from Hugo. Look, lots of questions everybody has, right? We're going to talk about those uh, tonight in the live stream, in fact. Um, but let me tell you, you know, uh, I am cautiously optimistic. I have said, and we've talked about this on the channel plenty. I'll be quick here and brief, but DeFi itself, I believe, is the next iteration of banking and finance. There's no question about it. Now, when you start mixing in the notion of what we're watching with the space, the potential suing of, you know, U.S. exchanges, right? Look, I, I, what I see from the government and regulators, I see Gary Gensler has the blessing of Congress as a whole. Yes, the right complains, they stand up, but they absolutely do nothing. So they proved themselves to be feckless to me. I can stand up and complain. I do it all the time. So the fact that I could do it, it doesn't make me feel any better that half of Congress can do it too. Do something about it, right? You know, but the reality is, is I believe that there's a larger goal that all of them have agreed on, generally speaking, which is that 99 plus percent of the crypto space is in fact unregistered securities, right? I personally include Ethereum into that myself. Now, with that being said, look at what's taking place here. This is a platform where you could stake your assets, now, imagine that goal of the government and regulators being achieved and what the majority of those assets may become. And what would you do with them? Maybe you put them somewhere like Flare Networks, right? And earn a yield or return, which are all kind of termed in a manner of talking about securities in a way. I hate to say it. So there's a lot of unknowns there that we still want to find out about. One thing I'm really... Uh, always been excited about from day one about Flair is this, is that, you know, uh, he, he chose the XRP space. He chose the XRP holders. 
And I think that's because Hugo understands ultimately that XRP, Ripple have always worked within the system and not from without side of the system. And I believe that's why I believe DeFi is going to be so very important in finance and banking. Now, let's take a look at this as just a throwback here. Shout out to Riz back in the day for this one. This was back in October. But I want to play just about a minute or so, a minute and a half of this. Because one, there's a couple of things. One, CNBC knows exactly what the use of XRP is. And we saw just days ago, Jim Cramer said, I don't even know what this crap does. It doesn't even do anything, right? So there is spin happening there. Those people don't get to just say whatever they want to say. I could tell you that. They wouldn't have a job if they did. So let's take a listen here because we're going to set the stage for the information we're moving into now that I believe touches on what, well, it's certainly for me, at, at, the, at the very least, it certainly for me solidifies what I am actually holding XRP for. Take a listen. Brad had some interesting things to say, and I thought it was really important to break down what he's talking about and what the opportunity, at least that Brad sees, and I think you know, ultimately could be the bull case for, uh, for Ripple. So let's break it down. Talking about the size of the payment markets, according to McKinsey, it's about $155 trillion is the size of the market. So your total addressable market is massive. Right now, if you take a look at what it costs to move $155 trillion, it's about $31 billion. Roughly around 20 basis points is what it's costing you. So if using Ripple, and this is from Ripple Stats, you could save about, according to them, about 60%. Well, how do they do that? So you use the Ripple Ledger plus the Ripple currency. And that's the key to this 60% right here. The reason why using the Ripple currency, if people start doing this, is good for is, is the way you save is because right now banks have to hold foreign currency everywhere in the world they're called nostro accounts it's very cost intensive to have that inventory around the world they can simply replace that foreign currency with xrp and they can save a lot of money on that so let's take a look at what ripple's been doing obviously it's been down i think we have a chart here yep obviously down from the peaks up here right the whole crypto market has kind of gone sideways here but what does Luis Yamada say? The bigger the base, the higher in space. In my view, you have to have people start using that XRP, that Ripple currency, in substitute for foreign currency. But that's the utility. That's the use case for Ripple, the currency. If that's the case, then that's a pretty nice base right there. Well, you know, listen, let, <laughs> that's 2018. CNBC knew exactly. They weren't confused like Jim Cramer is. He didn't know what any of this stuff is. Yeah, it's crap, he says. Nothing, it's worthless, all of this business, right? But in 2018, Brian Kelly knew exactly what the hell it is and where the market was and how much market's there to capture. Oh, my goodness. Such detail. Well, I tell you, he is right on the fact that you're going to want to see the adoption happen. We're about to show you that, too. In the next 12 to 36 months, Merlin Crypto Future Invest says, based on the macro financial markets and system, these infrastructure assets will come into their own. In my observations and research, things are on the edge of change. I agree with that comment wholeheartedly. The ISO 20022 migration is for messaging. And you can see, as we covered here, this is Citibank, and they're showing a huge kickoff here. We saw in November for these different areas of the world, it kicked in. And then we see another wave of kicking in ISO 20022, which is March and April. Big areas of windows to watch because that does allow with that messaging for the integration of using digital assets to move the value along with that rich messaging data as well. And shout out to this guy. Happy holidays to him and his family. Oh, this was super helpful to him. He says, explains all the questions he's been getting about 20022. This release makes perfect sense to me. But I'd like to hear from the XRP Ledger community if anything about this announcement confuses or intrigues you. He'll respond tomorrow. But in true fashion, Bob Way responded in just hours later. So, look, here's the thing. Bob Way, if you don't know, 
is a former Ripple employee and a huge guy and contributor to Ripple's technology in developing patents, along with many others on that team. And he is a brilliant mind. He's a very kind person. And he has a very, very special skill. And one of that, that special skill, among many, I'm sure, he's such a smart guy, but his ability to be able to explain the difficult to the simple. I sat down with Bob Way in 2019, and I tell you, um, what I was able to come away with understanding with a lot more clarity than I had going in was just amazing. And if he could get me to understand it, I know that you guys would absolutely love anything you could hear from him. And uh, he did, I did reach out to him and I said that, uh, you know, I'd love to have him on the show again. And he told me to, he's getting his sea legs and to reach out to him after the holidays and we'll see if we can't make something happen. I said, I sure will. So we will do that. So shout out to him. And look, here's the thing when it comes to ISO 20022 that I want to show you. This is love from Crypto Back to Day. Shout out to Kurt Scott. They're badasses. Original OGs in this space, baby. Yeah. Take a look at this. You're going to love it. How Ripple works. Tell Let's us. look at the inner workings of Ripple's settlement solution for banks, called XCurrent, and how it improves cross-border payments. In this example, two banks use a correspondent bank to route their payments. XCurrent includes Messenger, which is used to coordinate information exchange between the banks. And the ILP ledger uses the Interledger protocol to coordinate funds movement between institutions to settle the payment. XCurrent ingests existing message formats like Swift Fin or ISO 20022 through a translation layer. How about that? It's staring you right in the face from all the way back then. That's back when they were still calling everything X Current, X Via, every, all the different products where they combine them into on demand liquidity and RippleNet. Oh, it's just wonderful. X Rapid. Such as CGI's Intelligent Gateway or Volante's Volpe. Let's follow. Or Volante's Volpe. So all of this is coming together. We know all of this. Volante Ripple Partner, right? ISO 20022 Standards Body Committee. There's only two distributed ledger technology members on it. It's Ripple and Stellar Foundation. Follow one payment through the entire payment flow. First, the translation layer parses the message and collects necessary information to initiate the payment. Here you see that Alice in the US wants to send money to Bob in Germany. She wants Bob to receive 500 euros. Messenger communicates with the correspondent and beneficiary banks to obtain their payment processing fees and total cost. Next, pre-transaction validation takes place. This includes compliance screening and account verification checks. Since all banks have the necessary facts, they can pre-validate the payment even before funds move to ensure high straight-through processing rates. Now it's time to coordinate funds flow across the private ILP ledgers of these three different institutions. Private ILP ledgers. Interledger protocol built and developed by Stephen Thomas from Ripple now at Coil. In this example, the originating bank has a Nostro account with the correspondent bank, and the beneficiary bank is using a third-party liquidity provider to connect in with the correspondent bank. To begin the settlement process, Ripple coordinates a hold on the funds across all three ledgers. The ILP ledgers generate cryptographic signatures to verify that the funds are committed to the transaction. Then, the funds are simultaneously released across the three ledgers. This process ensures no settlement risk. The payment either executes or fails. Upon completion, Ripple provides a confirmation message to all counterparties. The entire payment process across multiple banks takes seconds and provides end-to-end -end visibility into the transaction while increasing processing rates and lowering operational costs. Join the global real-time settlement network Ripple and there you have it. And when I show you that, I tell you the feeling I get, and I hope maybe for yourself as well. I cannot know what will happen with this case. None of us can. And it would be disingenuous for any one of us to try to pretend that we could. But what I can share with you that I feel very resolved and brings me a great amount of peace and calmness 
is that I have done the absolute best I can for myself and my family to be as informed as I possibly can, to make the best best speculative, educated, speculative investments and guesses that I can for myself and my family. That's what I feel like when I study this information, go over it, share it, try to put the pieces together. It will never be a moment where someone says, yes, this is the path. This is the way to wealth. This is the right investment. You're never going to have that moment. You're only going to have the culmination of all the information that you can gather combined with your own assessment and tools that you use based on your desires, based on your goals. That's the key. And when I sit here and look and share this information, I get very excited and calm at the same time, knowing that I've done the best job I know that I can possibly do about where I've put my money for this investment is not financial advice. And then I see this. MoneyGram launches online remittance platform with Ripple Partner in Brazil. <laughs> yeah. Remember MoneyGram and Ripple? Mm-hmm. Remember when Alex Jones, or Holmes, excuse me, from uh, CEO of MoneyGram, said, hey, you never know where things can go in the future. We may revisit it again. I do remember him saying something like that effect. And now what we see is that MoneyGram launches online in Brazil, Frente Corretoro. It says, uh, developed in a partnership with Ripple. They partnered with TravelX, Ripple's major ODL partner bank in Brazil. MoneyGram Ripple did say committed to revisiting our relationship in the future. And they did say that. I do remember that. And I tell you, it is quite interesting to wonder now if MoneyGram did partner with the Ripple partner so they could have access to on-demand liquidity in Brazil. Pretty amazing stuff. Shout out to Ripple Van Winkle. This is where I first saw it. Give him a follow. That guy does a great job. Look, uh, it makes you wonder too, like what he shared here when David Schwartz had responded to Charles Hoskinson after he was very uh, negative towards XRP. He said, XRP provides no partnership or technical value. The community is toxic and petty, he said. And he said he could live without us. Well, shame on you. You're missing a lot. There's a lot of great people here. David Schwartz had responded. He said, you may want to wait a few days, read this tweet back, and then think about whether you're sure that's the combination of things you really want to say. Uh, that That's remarkable. I love that statement there. That is really great, David. Touche. Uh, and here we are with the MoneyGram news. Now, this is a chart that I think we all need to see. The case is ending. Exchanges are about to be sued. We might see a day of reckoning for Tether. Stablecoin legislation's closer than any kind of permanent full-on regulation, but it would be important to have stablecoin regulation. A ruling in the case where the SEC versus Ripple could provide and serve as certainly as clear guidance going forward. My goodness. Why couldn't we see the charts rhyme once again, right? Previous XRP chart formed a W pattern and then had two major blast off, 1,500% and then another 750. This time XRP is simply completing the formation of W pattern. I could say with a high degree of conviction, Egg Red Crypto says that rhyming cycles does happen and if it does, XRP is prone explosive for explosive moves. And look at what he's talking about here. Talking about that $28 we hear about from Dark Defender, $234 XRP. Where would it be? $23, $24? I don't know, but I'm here for it because I like what I see. I like what I see out of Ripple and the phase-in adoption that they have been doing since day one to bring XRP to the financial system. That's what we're talking about. And it doesn't get through the door without legal clarity. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. It's just my digital perspectives. I'll catch all of you on the next one.